Let's break down how to beat each of the champion level arena challenges as easily as possible, even on ultra hard. If you can beat them, these new challenges have some great rewards, including a total of 17 Brimshine and second copies of four of the new Elite Outfit Weaves. The Champion challenges unlock once you complete the Burning Shores DLC, and this set is a little bit different from the others. All four Champions challenges have competitive rankings, and even more significantly, they're the only ranked challenges that are open loadout. That's right, you can use whatever gear you want for these, which is super refreshing compared to the original locked loadout challenges. However, that certainly doesn't mean these challenges are easy. We have have some of the toughest machines to deal with, and we're typically going to have to face them in groups. But don't worry, we're going to break each challenge down step by step to make sure you can beat them on any difficulty, get those rewards, and get back to your adventures in the Forbidden West. Before diving into the challenges, let's take a look at the loadout we're going to use for all of them. We won't use everything in this loadout for every challenge, but once we have this build set up, we won't need to change it. Our outfit is the Tanakh Skirmisher, equipped with stamina regen and low health defense weaves. The stamina and valor boosts are most important, but low health ranged and concentration regen are nice to have too. For Frost, we're going to use the Seeker Hunter Bow equipped with three 15% Frost Coils. We'll also grab the Lightning Hunter Bow loaded with some Shock Coils. A Sharp Shot Bow is always handy for some quick damage, so we'll grab the Delta and load some Impact Damage Coils. But our primary damage weapon is going to be a Bolt Blaster, specifically the Relentless coiled with Concentration and Impact. The Rampart Blast thing will be used for triggering traps, and I'll just put some Explosive Damage Coils on it. Our most important weapon is going to be a rope caster and we'll use the elite. Now, this is clearly not the best gear. I would consider this to be about the minimum build you need to get through these challenges, but I would highly recommend using better gear. To do these challenges, you have to have completed the Burning Shores, which means you have access to the tie that binds legendary rope caster. I would absolutely buy that and upgrade it as much as possible before doing these challenges. I would also highly recommend you get enough arena medals to buy and upgrade the Blast Forge Bolt Blaster. Its damage output is much higher than the Relentless I'm going to use here. A better outfit will help keep you alive more easily as well. The Nora Thunder Warrior, Tanakh the Vanquisher, and Quen Marine are all good options. Whatever you use, you definitely want to max out your Weapon Stamina Plus and Stamina Regen skills. Maxing out skills that help Valor are important too, and low health skills are also really helpful. Whenever possible, you should definitely be using the Elite Outfit Weaves from the Burning Shores. If you want to learn more about how to optimize outfit and weave combos, I'll link my outfit and weaves video down below. I'll also also link my spreadsheet for all the coil and weave locations. Before heading in, we want to make sure we have a full set of smoke bombs crafted and we'll also equip a full set of 12 elite vertical shock, purge water, and acid traps. And don't worry about these items being expensive because the arena gives us back all of our consumables once we're done. We also want to have stamina and cleansing potions equipped and these should be prioritized over health potions. And finally, once you have everything set up, make sure you create a manual save. The challenges cost shards to enter, so if you run out, you can just load up your manual save to get them all back. Of course, if you use the duplication glitch, you'll have plenty of shards to fund your arena grind. I'll link those videos down below too. All right, let's dive in starting with Apex Water Wings. All right, Apex Water Wings, we have four birds to deal with in this one. Um, we're basically going to rope each one down and we will use some smoke bombs to help us do that because it'll help us immobilize them a little bit more and make it easier to get the ropes on them. So drop in here, get one rope on the first bird. Um, it's going to take two ropes for each one. You saw we used the smoke bomb there to make that a little bit easier. And basically, we're just going around here and trying to get them all roped down and avoiding the attacks as much as we can. You saw there I used the penetrating rope weapon technique to fire the rope faster. Um, the, in the bottom right, the gold stamina bar decreased when I used that. Get a second rope on this one. Got him tied down. There's one more. I'm looking around for him. Where is he? He's probably flying. I think he drops down right there. Pop a smoke bomb to immobilize. Get a rope, penetrating rope. Saw the stamina decrease there. So they're all down now. And basically what we're going to go and do is go up to each one and put down four purge water traps. Not right next to them. You want to be a little bit away because they could trigger them by accident while they're moving around. Um, get the traps down, and then we're going to freeze them. I aim for this armor plate, like that's kind of in their armpit, to prevent the tie down from degrading. That plate right there. Get him frozen, get our bolt blaster out. Trigger our ranged Master Valor Surge so we get a damage boost. 
and I'll aim for the weak point that's on their wing. There's one on the front of the wing. We destroyed it. There's another one on the chest that I'm aiming for here. And then basically we're just going to try and bait them into the traps. He's almost dead. I don't really need to get that sharp shot bow shot off. That was actually probably a slight waste of time, um, but it worked nonetheless. We got him to jump through the traps. So we'll go to the next one, get four purge water traps down and then freeze him. You can also hit the armor plate that's on the front of their wing, but sometimes when you do that, you'll end up hitting the weak point and degrade the tie down state pretty quickly. So hitting this armor plate that's like kind of in their armpit works a little bit better. So here I'm going to take a stamina potion because I didn't have enough to do a sustain burst. I'm going to aim for his face a little bit more on this one because I want to make sure I don't hit my purge water traps, being really careful not to trigger those too soon. Bait him into him and he's dead. So we have two more. Now these guys are about to get free. The one behind me actually is free already, obviously. And so we'll pop another smoke bomb. And here I'll use some shock arrows to just immobilize this one. And then I'm not going to tie him down. He's okay. He's immobilized. So I'm going to actually focus the other one right now. Well, the first one that's shocked is already immobilized. We'll get ropes on this guy. One more shot. There we go. And then we can get ropes on this one. We'll probably pop another smoke bomb here. Let him jump over. I wanted to get him next to the other one. So I can show you guys a different tactic you can use if you get two or more of them close together. So this is kind of cool. If you get two or more of them close together, you could use elite vertical shock traps, specifically the shock traps. Put four of them down in between the uh, group that you've got tied down. And then we're going to back off a little bit to make sure we don't explode ourselves. And we'll launch a bomb at those. So that'll damage them. It'll also shock them. Now it looks like they're going to get up and try and attack you, but they won't. Um, they go right back down because they're shocked. So we set up another four, back off, launch a bomb, go back in, set up another four. It takes all 12 elite vertical shock traps to do this. Back off again, one more bomb, and we got them both. So that's Apex Water Wings. We did that in about 3.15, which is about a minute 15 under the 4.30 time limit. Up next is Scrap Beast. This is actually, in my opinion, the hardest challenge in the set. So we have four Apex Clamber Jaws and two Apex Bile Guts. Same tactic, though, to start off with. We're going to rope them all down using the Rope Caster, and we're going to make sure we have our smoke bombs ready to go to help with that. Um, I do like to try and get the Bile Guts roped down first. We'll tag up all their parts so that it's easier to see those components later on when we use them to deal damage. So we'll drop in here, get a rope on the first frog, pop smoke, slide to quick draw another rope to get him tied down. They're down for 90 seconds once you get the ropes on them, all machines. Get a second rope on this guy. So we don't have to worry about those guys for 90 seconds. We'll get a rope on this clamber jaw. Um, pop smoke here. Dodging their attacks is the hardest thing. Also, clamber jaws, for some reason, don't seem to get confused when you uh, pop smoke a lot of times, which is one of the many reasons they're extremely annoying. When they do that jump attack and have the explosion come out with rocks, that's a good time where they'll be immobile. They'll be like motionless for a second after it. So if you can get used to that attack and dodge it, you'll be able to uh, rope them down pretty easy. OK, so we've got a couple of them together here, which is great. So I'm going to put down four elite vertical shock traps, similar to like what we did with the water wing in the last one, or the two water wings. Hit a bomb on those to kill them both. These two are a little bit too spread out, but we're just going to basically do the same thing. Head over to this one, put down four elite vertical shock traps again. One, two, three, four, back off. Use an explosive bomb, explode him. So we just have one clamber jaw left here. He actually got free. He was a little bit too close to that explosion um, that it released him. So we'll get another rope on him. That was probably max range for a rope caster right there. Put down our four elite vertical shock traps. Two, three, four. Back off, grab my explosive bomb, kill him. So now we just have the bile guts and 
They are pretty much free at this point. This one's free. The other one's about to get free, so we popped smoke there. Immobilized the first one again. This one just got free. We'll get another rope back on him. And one more. Okay. So now we're going to set up to basically do what I showed in my bile gut hunting guide. So we're going to freeze them by hitting an armor plate on one of the legs to prevent the tie down from degrading. You'll see me jump a lot of times when I use frost arrows or any arrow. That's not necessary. It just helps trigger that quick draw hidden mechanic. Um, I have a video on secret combat mechanics you can watch if you want to learn a little bit more about that, but it's not necessary to do that. We're going to trigger our Reigns Master Valor Surge here, and then I will start a sustain burst with the Bolt Blaster. Target the Egg Launcher, that's a good one. Then you can kind of turn and target some of the components at the back here. Reload the Bolt Blaster, pop smoke again, tie him down again, one rope and two ropes. Our Range Master Valor Surge is still rolling. We need to reload the Bolt Blaster um, and we do need to freeze him again. That wore off. So basically same thing we did before. Frost arrows to an armor plate. So he stays tied down, but he gets frozen at the same time. And then we're on the opposite side now so we can hit the other egg launcher turn, target some components at the back if we can. Not critical that we hit them all. And he's down. So now we just need to do the same thing with the other bio gut. He doesn't have too much tie down left, so I'm actually going to put down some advanced purge water traps here. We'll bait him into them after we uh, go through our routine here. One more frost arrow to the armor plate. He's free at this point, but we'll get our sustain burst in because he just got free. We should be able to do it. Got the egg launcher, land the rest of the sustain burst, and then back off and position ourselves between him and the purge water bombs so that he jumps into them. Snuck in a focus shot shot with my sharp shot bow there. A little bit of extra damage. Targeting that egg launcher again. If you have a better sharp shot bow, like Year of Downfall, or even the Gravesinger from the Burning Shores, um, and you load it up with critical hit chance coils or the elite critical hits coils, those sharp shot shots are going to be a lot stronger and help you a lot more. But we're just rolling with the delta here and some impact damage coils just to prove a point. So we need to reload our bolt blaster. This should be the last cycle we need to kill him. Get another focus shot in. And one more. So at this point, I probably should have just tied him down and stopped doing all these focus shots with the sharp shot bow because we're probably just wasting time. With this particular sharp shot bow, we just don't deal that much damage, but we should be able to get it done here. So he slides over, jumps over, we slide out of the way. Explode the sack on his throat. Get our Range Master Valor Surge going again. Frost arrows. Get out of the way of that tongue attack. Some more frost arrows here. So optimally, like I said, I think you should probably tie him down again here. I definitely got a little bit carried away with the sharp shot bow. Um, we probably could have had him dead by now with another sustain burst, but we got it done there with the sharp shot bow and looks like we did that in 440, which is about 50 seconds under the 530 time limit. All right, wildfire. Um, this one's tricky because we only have two and a half minutes to get it done. We have four apex clamber jaws again and two scorchers this time, which are easier to kill than the bile guts, but we still have a lot of machines to take down. So the trick here is going to be getting them to group up um, so we can kill multiple at once. I also like to target or uh, highlight all the scorcher components. Um, I'd prefer to tie down the Scorchers first if they were close, but they're not. So we're going to go for one of these Clamber Jaws here. But I am strategically making my way towards the Scorchers um, to get them tied down quickly because they can one-shot us very easily in this challenge, especially on higher difficulties. And so we want to immobilize them quickly and basically just kind of avoid 
the clamber jaws as much as we can until we get the scorchers tied down. So we're avoiding attacks here, looking for opportunities to tie machines down. There's that jump where they slam into the ground, and that's a good opportunity to tie down a clamber jaw right after. Pop smoke here. Get ropes on this second scorcher so they're not a hazard anymore. There we go. Now, I need to get some machines grouped together here. So I'm strategically trying to bait these machines towards this other clamber jaw instead of roping him down where he was. We have to get at least a few of them together, otherwise we're not gonna get this done under the time limit. So there, here we have three, this is a great grouping. Um, even if you can just get two together, that's a big deal, that's good. Um, but getting three or more together is excellent. So we're gonna get down four elite vertical shock traps here and then back off, but we won't explode them yet. I'm first gonna trigger the chain burst valor surge so that we can chain damage to all the machines in the area from this explosion. I'm gonna fully overdraw this bomb, let it go. And you can see that got all three clamber jaws and the scorcher over on the left there. So we took down four machines by basically being strategic with how we um, positioned them when we tied them down. And you really kind of need to do that to get this done under the time limit. Um, this single clamber jaw, I'm just gonna do some focus shots to take him down. It should take two or three, depending on what bow you've got. There we go. So now we just have the scorcher left. We have a little under a minute to do this. We're gonna freeze him by hitting an armor plate. There we go. And then we're gonna do a sustain burst. You wanna avoid hitting that back component until the end because it'll explode and shock them and uh, interrupt your, either interrupt your sustain burst or get rid of the frost. So save that till the end. He should be almost dead. I think I'm just gonna get him with a focus shot here or a sharp shot. There we go. So we did that in about a minute 55, so about 35 seconds under the time limit. All right, plasma and fire. Um, what's funny is even though this is the last challenge, I think it's the easiest in the set. We have a couple big machines to deal with, but they're easier to deal with than five or six uh, mediums. So the apex fire claw is actually the bigger threat. The slaughter spine is not apex. So it only takes 20K damage on ultra hard to kill the slaughter spine, but it's 30K to kill the, uh, the fire claw. So we're gonna rope them both down. We already got the fire claw rope down. Now we're moving on to the slaughter spine. Just gonna immobilize it, then turn our attention back to the fire claw. Freeze to an armor plate, just like we've been doing for all the challenges. Get my bolt blaster out. We're gonna trigger range master. So we get a damage boost. Target these canisters on its butt. That's some great damage there. Finish off the sustain burst, pop smoke to keep him from running around or trying to attack us, get ropes back on him. I'm kind of circling around him here as I slide to do the ropes so that we're positioned for another sustain burst and for freezing, his, um, freezing him on an armor plate. There we go, he's frozen again. We don't have um, any Valor to do ranged master this time, but that's fine. We'll still get plenty of damage doing a sustain burst. Reload our bolt blaster. Go for those canisters again. There's a couple of them left. Finish off the sustain burst, reload, smoke again. Same cycle as before. Rope him down. Two ropes. There it is, he needs to be frozen again. I'm accidentally using shock ropes here, but that's all right. We'll get the regular ropes out and finish it off. Definitely not trying to use shock ropes intentionally there. So we have enough valor again. We'll be able to use a valor surge if we want, but we're gonna get him frozen first. Get our bolt blaster back out where all those canisters on the back are gone. So I'm now just gonna target his face, hoping that some of the bolts will hit his eye for a damage multiplier. So you can see we're getting some eye shots there. And he's down. So now we can deal with the slaughter spine. This is gonna be even easier because it um, is only two thirds of the health of that fire claw. Pop smoke again, he just got free of his ropes. So we're gonna rope him down again. Two ropes for him as well. Just like all large machines with a good enough rope caster, that is. 
freeze to an armor plate. Now, when we use the sustain burst, we're gonna wanna target this plasma earth grinder on the belly there that I just highlighted, because underneath that is the plasma core, which is the highest damage multiplier component on a slaughter spine. Um, so we're gonna do a sustain burst to this thing. The plasma earth grinder. You see it popped off. There's the plasma core exposed. I'm trying to get shots on it. I don't think I got a single shot on it on this sustain burst, but that's all right. We still did some good damage. Get ropes back on him. And we'll have to freeze him again. Same cycle we've been doing, hitting an armor plate. Get the bolt blaster back out. Crafting some bolts there, because I was pretty low. Reload. You can see that plasma core is exposed there, so I'm gonna get in a good position right here to target it. Get a really nice damage boost by hitting that thing. It's really satisfying if you've got a powerful sharp shot bow to just smack that with a elite or advanced precision arrow. Get some really awesome damage if you can get a crit on it. We should have one more cycle to go here. He's pretty close. Need to get frost going again. Accidentally loading some advanced hunter arrows there. Don't need to do that. Frost to a plate. One more. I'm taking a stamina potion here because I was pretty low on stamina. Wouldn't have been able to do the sustain burst. But we'll get our bolt blaster loaded here and we have the stamina to do it now. We also have range master. We probably don't need this. He's almost dead, but uh, we'll give it a go here. And there you go, he's down. So we did that one in about three and a half minutes, which is well under the five minute time limit. All right, guys, that's my guide for the champion level arena challenges. I hope you found these tips helpful. And if you're looking for more tips on the arena, you should definitely check out my original arena guide right here, where we break down all the base game locked loadout challenges and cover a bunch of tips for the open loadout ones as well. I also want to mention that my friend Mr. Fancy Pants has created an excellent guide that walks you through all the base game challenges, and he's working on updating it for these new champions ones as well. You should also check out Wallace and Paulino's arena guides for even more tips. Wallace and Mr. Fancy pants hold top times in all of the challenges so huge shout out to them for mastering the arena and sharing their knowledge with the rest of the community lots of links to check out down below and as always thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next one